Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this special edition of the Game Changer Podcast. I am Nate the Effing Great, and you notice the fact that there's no intro music to this. That's because it's completely raw, completely unfiltered, and I'm very proud to have with me one of the founders of the wrestling show, quite possibly one of the best wrestlers in this area right here in Rockford, Illinois. This is the one and only Matt Jones, 2587, or you can just call him Matt for all we know. <laughs> I go by Matthew. Actually, that's my friend's family, Matthew. Okay. Matt Jones, 2587, that's like the wrestling gimmick. But <laughs> it's like the avatar that people would like to see on yes. <laughs> like Xbox Live or play PS4 or whatever. If you're going to download me as a downloadable character on the WWE 2K games, it's Matt Jones, 2587. Hey, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> D- didn't you and your wife do like a recording for like... Uh, for, for like some create wrestlers that were somebody else made that one really? of our friends yes uh, Nathan I believe his name is just like you oh, apparently yeah, yeah made the well Brandon Brandon is his oh, name Brandon okay. Brandon made a video because he's got his own NXT thriller YouTube channel with all of his own created characters and he created Kate and I and put him on his game we actually won the championships and we did a reaction video to that oh they're like uh was it like an intergender tag team belt or something? No, she won the women's tag the women's championship on this show, oh, and I won the okay. United States championship oh, nice. on the video game show. Nice, very yeah. nice. Yeah. So a lot of people might have seen, you know, the fact that you do are one of the big stars for the wrestling the wrestling show. It used to be the YouTube wrestling show, mm-hmm. uh, but we'll definitely talk about that because I'm sure you've got a lot to vent about when it comes to. Uh, the red yeah. brand, and no, we're not talking about Monday Night Raw, obviously. <laughs> but YouTube, yeah, I used to have a lot of bad feelings towards YouTube until I realized they were run by a computer, and the computer was trying to speak to me and direct me in what to do. Really? Yes. Telling me, you can't do that, Matthew. You can't do that, Matthew. I'm going to have to give you a strike for this, Matthew, type stuff. And then finally, YouTube gave me one final strike a few weeks ago. What's up, Mikey? And they said it was for spamming. This is Nate the and Great. We're live on the podcast. How's it going, man? You. How you been? You guys are being joined here by one of Matthew's cohorts, Mikey. Mikey 518. He's a referee. Mikey 518. Mikey 518. Okay. Mikey 518. Yep, Raph yeah. also, also plays multiple characters on the show. also love the fact that you were rocking a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> yes. I was a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> on him. Video games. We're live. How you guys doing out there in the podcast universe? <laughs> so we were talking about um, YouTube and uh, the YouTube. all its splendor with yeah. huge quotations. Yeah, and they basically told me that I was getting a strike for spam, so to change my stuff to it's all original. That they couldn't say that, but I googled what spam was, and they also sent me a video of how I should start changing my show. Are you serious? I swear. Wow. Yep. So after two channels getting deleted over two years. YouTube decided to, to make a video for me to tell me what I'm supposed to do so, so they can recommend my stuff. So you mean this computer, this, we'll call it AI, yeah. deci- decided to take its time instead of just looking at videos that are probably very much graphic or just un- inappropriate for YouTube, decided to take its time to create a video basically saying, hey, you need to do this for your content. Yep. Wow, uh, that's good YouTube for you. <laughs> yeah, and, and also in, in 2020, you could have a live agent for help, for support center. So I was able to get a custom URL made, which is a difficult thing for whatever reason, and they did it for me, just a real person. Even if right now, if I had a problem, YouTube offers support for its users now, mm-hmm. like never before. So I have good things to say about YouTube. <laughs> I love YouTube. <laughs> good things to say about it, but obviously there's still some things about it that it's like, you could probably fix the bugs here and there. The, the copyright issues, stuff like that, yeah, YouTube doesn't need to be so lawful when it comes to how they make you live inside of their box. But Yeah, it, it is crazy because I get those kind of copyright strikes with some of the interviews that, not the interviews, but some of the shows I do because I do use WWE-owned music, but I just reached okay. a point where it's just like, just, screw it, this is just not worth worth my time right now. YouTube's not really giving me that much in the way of views anyway. It's just another platform for people to kind of look at it. But obviously, for you, it is a key platform for you, other than Patreon or even uh, Vimeo, I believe it was, right? Yeah, we got Vimeo, uh, which is on-demand service. So, like, all of our one-on-one matches from the old seasons and even up to to this day, you can go on there and rent and download our matches on Vimeo. But our number one merchandise driver and the sponsor to get new customers is definitely YouTube. Yeah, because it's an internet it's internationally known really. Yeah. 
So obviously, there's a lot of people that probably don't know too much about you. So what can you tell us about the origins of Matt Jones? What is kind of like, you know, some of your early life experiences and what kind of got you to where you are right now? Um, wrestling, I, we talked about this earlier. Uh, I, like I said, my dad was a wrestling fan. So for me, I just thought wrestling was something that my dad liked, that my grandma liked. And then I seen The Undertaker, you know, and then it started transitioning me into, like, theater and wanting to do fighting and stuff like that. So I ended up taking up school, theater in school, and I started fighting kids in school. I had a wrestling match in high school that kind of set my life on this course. I had a viral video on YouTube, actually, way back when it was first constructed, of me parodying The Undertaker. Really? And yes, and I had a dude who was... Uh, slightly deformed, I guess you could say, playing Paul Bearer. Well, YouTube uh, viewers attacked that video with harsh comments, making fun of this guy so bad that it was getting all these views, generating all types of ad revenue, and all of a sudden one day it stopped. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? And years later, YouTube unlocked all of the hidden comments that it had held for spam. Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of comments on this video. A lot of them were good, a couple of them were negative, but because of some of them, such the bad ones that it had to hold them all back. So I'm thinking in my mind, I had all these people watching me parody The Undertaker for 10 fucking years while YouTube was keeping it hidden from me. So I started parodying The Undertaker again. And all of a sudden, the views started going back over good. And then Aiden, my son, started wrestling. Somebody paid us to have me fight Kate, so then she started wrestling. And then it kind of just took off from there. But, like, the origins had been within me the whole entire time. Like I said, The Undertaker is what captivated me to do this. And then years later, YouTube told me, shit, you had a good video, we just couldn't show anybody because the fans were being so obnoxious on it. That is something that's always a pain, is that, especially now with social media, that you see so many people that can be either jaded or they can just be absolutely ruthless when yeah. it comes to... So, so many of these things. Even if, you know, one person doesn't look exactly perfect the way it was, they're going to be all on that, and then somehow it's going to just branch off into other directions. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it really set the whole course for everything. YouTube had pretty much blackballed me because the fans were going to be rude about the content that I was putting out, even though a lot of the comments were great. You know, every 100 comment, there was one negative one, and that was enough for the old version beta of YouTube to keep my channel suppressed. Okay. Oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, when did you first come up with the idea of the wrestling show? Was it just you know all these people wanting to see you guys guys wrestle, or what was what was kind of like the key point where it's like we have something here, let's finally roll it with it and actually make good content out of this? Uh, I'm gonna use Mikey as an example since he's here and I can feel him. And me and Kate and Aiden were just making videos on YouTube and turning over money a little bit here and there. And I had sent a few messages out to a few people that I was friends with. And Mikey was one of those guys that showed up when I invited people over. And I'm like, oh my God, if people are going to start showing up and feeding on camera, then maybe there's something to what we're doing. And it's not just some ridiculous thing that me and my family are doing on the side. It might be something that I can get fellow wrestling fans into. I mean, Mikey and I had been friends since high school. We ran into each other only at wrestling events. Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> we only stayed friends through running into each other at the Metro Center watching wrestling shows, talking about wrestling stuff back and forth on the internet mm. here and there. And then all of a sudden, the wrestling show started bringing people like you and me and Mikey together. And that's when I realized, okay, it's more than just videos on the internet. I'm actually able to help and change lives. You know, it, and, and watching some of the videos back and seeing, like, you know, it's just, you know, it's it's a little house show, right? You know, it's a house show. You know, it's not nothing, but it's like people are having fun. People are actually having fun, actually getting together, actually enjoying their time being with each other. So it just it it came like a natural weekend tradition, like every week tradition. Show up at you know house and film real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and it definitely do does feel like it's one of those shows where it's like you know. You know, some parts obviously probably have to be scripted, but a lot of the other stuff is just like, oh fuck it, let's just have fun with this. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's kind of how it is. Yeah. Most times we yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. Which you can, I can definitely see. There's a lot of matches that I've seen where you guys definitely seem like you're just enjoying it. You guys are actually 
looking back and just thinking like, yeah. Not taking it too seriously. Yeah. That's the key. Just really having fun. And in today's times, you can't really take anything too seriously. (laughs) Yeah, and today we're just trying to provide entertainment for people because they don't know what to do. Everybody's been quarantined. It's like, where's the more wrestling shows? So that kind of got me really energized to making better products because I'm like, fuck, everybody's really wanting to see the show now. Whereas before, I felt like you could take it or leave it. You know, it was CBS Nighttime News. But for whatever reason, <laughs> now the fans are, are acting like it's literally Monday Night Raw back in 1995. You know what I mean? So it's like, shit, we're on to something now. Which keeps everything going forward. I'm going to do the audio. Oh, you're good. He says, I don't know, that's what he told me to tell you. I'm not even being a dick. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. We might have to take a pause break. Let's go to the All right, so after that brief pause, we've actually added some new people. Cue the... Uh, D- deal from Smash Brothers. New challenger has approached. <laughs> uh, you might remember one of one of these voices because he was actually on my show a couple of years ago with the lovely Chris Williamson, and that is the one and only Wyatt Elliott. Great to have you back. Nice to be here. <laughs> and also, he may periodically come in every now and then. Nick from FML's here. I think. Hey. <laughs> okay, he is here. How are you guys doing? <laughs> We're doing good. How are you doing? I'm in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the house. So just, spread, just spread some rumor that he's like, he's been outside for 40 days. <laughs> first day, back in the house. <laughs> it's like a grassy desert out there. I've been lost for days. I mean, <laughs> it's really weird when you have to pick up your own feces off the ground because the neighbors are complaining. Um, <laughs> Home Alone 3. <laughs> yeah. Quarantine 2020. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I was thinking of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Because okay. <laughs> okay. we made the grass joke. I'm just thinking of that scene where they're just out and they're like in those like tall grassy areas. Great like, scene. Of, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> I, rem- I remember when they had that stuff for, and I know we're getting off topic, but I don't care. It's my show. Love it. That's right. In Disney World when they had, you know, that lifelike uh, set that they had where they had the large grass blades, the Legos. And stuff I've like never that. seen that. You've never yeah. seen that? No. I heard well, about it. But yeah, I, I heard about, about it. it. Wow. <laughs> This is I a video of this? That, unfortunately, this might pre-exist YouTube. There, there, this, would, this would go back to when we actually took cameras, uh, video pictures with uh, actual cameras, the ones you had to just click the button. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> remember the Wait. disposable ones, too? Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, gosh, those were the biggest pain in the ass. How many ever. actually had, like, disposable cameras? And threw them away without ever getting them developed. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I guarantee I've done that once. I've done that once. I've yeah, guaranteed that. A whole bunch that. of memories gone. Have you ever yeah, noticed yeah. If, like, if you get a nice camera, though, like you lose it way faster than like a shitty one? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, true. You, know, like, yeah. you just like drop the camera in the street or somewhere down like down anything, you'd be like, oh, fuck. You, mean, you, you do it with a, uh, a really expensive one all the time, but if you have like a cheapo, like you'll drop it and someone will return it to you. No, no, I just dropped it. So. Yeah. No, I didn't need that one. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? You throw it in the drawer and you never get them developed, really. Uh. It's, it's kind of like the same thing with the wallet. If somebody's got like a really crappy wallet that's got like duct tape and stuff like that, it's like, oh, hey, you dropped this. But if yeah. it's like one well, of those like leather upholstery ones, and it's just like, ooh, what's in here? <laughs> <laughs> I got my wallet acquired by uh, complimenting a guy on his wallet. Are you I serious? Said, Bro, that's a nice wallet. A couple of days later, he gave it to me. I was like, Fuck. <laughs> I still got the wall in my pocket right now. <laughs> that is sure amazing. Too, because I liked it because it had guns on it. And like, I don't know, it's like a Western style wallet. I can, I can never just admit is we like guns yeah. just because they're cool. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I don't need to protect I mean, myself yeah. in my house. I know I'm familiar with the territory. Total. I actually started a little wallet collection. I collect a little... Oh, nice! Oh, like, that oh, looks like a Nintendo or a Sega game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, this is, nice. yeah. this is really, that really cool. We've got a whole podcast where we show each other stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Show and tell! Yeah, it's like, like changing out like every two or three, three weeks. That's a cool idea. Hey. I can never keep a wallet to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> he legit walks around with all of his cards in his pocket. Yeah. Every day. Oh, debit really? card, driver's license, social wow. security card. Yep. Oh, yeah. okay. I can never, I mean, I can I never mean, keep a wallet. Every like summer, I would go off to summer camp and I would lose another wallet. It was like $100. So like, I have like two hundred dollars just in Wisconsin somewhere. So like, yeah. I'm just, I don't mean to interrupt, but those are really specific amounts. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I know I lost it because I was on the way to see some hoes. <laughs> I, I was gonna make a comment. It's like, no, we've already went. We've already went too far with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say, as far as wallets go, you could also do a fanny pack too. That works. 
Ugh. Well, man I understood. Bag. Socks, man. Man bag. Or, or man, man bag. bag. Man purse. Sa- satchel, satchel. Satchel. I wear the vest. It's I, got literally four pockets in it. Two yeah. on each side. Yeah, okay, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 there you go. You know that one. Cold said something. He's got <laughs> some wrestling knowledge. <laughs> he's got more than he's leading now. He knows. Yeah. Don't make me do. Don't make Don't make me do. Don't make me do impressions. Yeah, we have wrestling <laughs> next week. I'm taking down, whole, I'm taking down everybody, brother. Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. He's even got the neck veins going. I like it. Hey, hey. Sam Jim. Uh, uh, Slim Jim guy, what's his name? Macho Man. Macho Man yeah. costume for like 60 bucks online. So oh, really? Give me even really? Two weeks, I'll buy it. We oh, just, nice. I'll hold off on doing the Macho Man yeah, character. I'll hold off on doing it. And then, I got a um, bunch of Slim Jims in the trunk and a big cardboard Slim Jim and, thing that I took from the Yeah, you just got to do your stuff. Yeah, it's still yeah. 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 It has like the fringes on the arm. On oh that. yeah. It comes with what? The hat. Oh, what are they wearing? Oh, the the <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, oh, see, yeah. I see a bunny suit back there. They're yeah, be, that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Awesome. We're somewhere in Buffalo right now where Chris is in quarantine. And she's so lonely, she ends up bringing back her imaginary unicorn friend to become her friend. She's playing both parts, and it's like in a split screen. Oh my gosh. And she's wearing that costume in it, but it's so hot, we have to do it in segments. We can only film it, she can't that makes sense. stand it. I, 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 I it's, totally it's get that. Be hilarious. Oh my so god. We got, I'm going to film another part of it tomorrow. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of those FMLs, which are always hilarious. If you guys have not seen them, definitely check them out. Absolutely amazing. I watched um, one the other day. It was way back. And it what? was only like 30 seconds. And it was like, this is yeah. the most funniest thing ever. The, the first it, season was like 30 seconds each, yeah. It was it was a Mandy. And a boyfriend had like a man thong. And she was like, I yeah. found like this thong that wasn't yeah. mine. And yeah. she goes to her boyfriend. He's like, oh, babe, you found these for me. He's in the bathroom just <laughs> dancing around with him. That was the whole thing. I was like, yeah, this all, yeah. Back in the day, they were super short. And a uh, funny story about that episode. So the thumbnail, I don't know if it still is or not, but it used to be her holding up the pants. Yeah, it is. Is it? So um, I I don't know, 2011 or something, or, uh, wow, 2011 or 12, yeah. I end up getting a, a, an article written about FML oh. in the local paper. And That's cool. did a phone interview, told them about it, blah, blah, blah. And they, the, when, it, when it, it was in the ghost section, you guys remember the ghost section? I remember section, the ghost section. Yeah. Thing? And so he, her picture, big giant thing of Mandy, yeah. holding panties, <laughs> was on the front page of the entertainment section. Uh, okay. Her dad didn't know she was doing these videos. Super Catholic. Oh, oh, oh shit. That's funny. Like, this guy, yeah. you walk into his house, and it was like Jesus, 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 everywhere. Like, You're just right. Everywhere. I went to Catholic and, school with her. Did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. St. Edwards. So I know they were definitely Christian Catholics. That's yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> so she calls me. I'm asleep or whatever. <laughs> and I get this call from her. It's like 7 or 8 in the morning or something. And uh, I in my old apartment, I used to, I don't know why I want to give you this visual, but I will. But I used to like <laughs> uh, sleeping in my closet because I just like being all tight in there and stuff. And I would do this from time to time, usually drunk. But and I, I remember I was in the closet and I got the phone call and I'm coming out of the closet like like what the fuck is going on and she's telling me about I have to pull the FMLs with her in it and she doesn't want to remember her dad's gonna kill her he was really mad what? about he was really mad about the Christmas one she did oh, because man. she's in a Christmas outfit and she's sitting on Santa's lap and Santa gets a boner. And oh my that gosh. was the episode, and he was so mad because how dare she make fun of the Lord's Day? Oh, what? And so that episode what? temporarily got removed off oh. YouTube back on the old channel for a while because of that. And then later, it was like years later, I was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, put it yeah, we'll put it back up. Like, it's fine. Yeah, and, and the only reason, because her fa- they didn't use her face, they probably never would have read the article. Uh, but damn, they, yeah. But they saw her. And her face and some underwear. It's my <laughs> Well, I guess I have to this burn that dress now. Yeah, I guess you have to burn the dress now. <laughs> That's uh, I really don't want to do this and That's say this. Funny, it, bro. It I have to get a picture of you. I, it I'm kind sorry. Of just, it kind of just gets... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Quiet blush. It's small enough. It's small enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I really don't even want to say this, but I think I gained weight since I've been here. <laughs> like, I'm serious. I, I, I'm about to say, you gain weight, but you fit that ni- dress so nicely. I, I mean, I, I fit it better. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. The dress is so... Um, what, was it the oh wrestling? Which episode was it where I told you to wear a oh, suit? Cool. I think it was the wrestling one, the Christmas one. And I okay. handed him a girl suit instead. Mm-hmm. And then I started talking to other actors, and it's like a little. He shirt. gave everybody costumes. Yeah. And said, You put this on, you put this on, you put this on. <laughs> so we all got dressed, and mine was a fucking skirt. So I'm like, I guess I'm playing a cross dressing guy. <laughs> so I put it on, and Wyatt comes in laughing his ass off at me. He's like, Why are you wearing that skirt? I was like, Bro, you gave it to me. I was following yeah. directions. I, I didn't realize, because they looked exactly the same as a male female version. Yeah. Oh, okay. I the wrong one. That was really funny. I forgot about that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, this is what I'm doing today. <laughs> yeah. I got that on film. I don't remember. No, somebody took a picture of me before I got yeah. off because I didn't want to. Yeah, I was not about to wear the skirt. I was like, no, I'm put the pants on. <laughs> <laughs> because pants are surprisingly more comfortable than a skirt. <laughs> Made more sense, yeah. yeah. More appropriate. I don't know. He's, he's chilling his. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> that was that Christmas episode. Which was one of the greats, I think. You gotta watch. Done. You gotta watch the hundredth. That, that was amazing. amazing. I don't know, it's good. I don't know, it's really good. What's the 100th? The 100th episode. <laughs> oh, I've, prob- I've probably seen it. It's I guess I don't know what's it's going like, on. It's like a bunch of FMLs <laughs> all together, like in the same. Oh. It's that's so right. cool. I, I, uh, I, I, me and his brother are in one yeah. together, and like right on the stairs. It's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, I, I do know that they have that in common. He doesn't even offer me his jacket or nothing. <laughs> 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 of course I'm going to complain I'm bleeding from the crotch oh, God this really evolved <laughs> This went uh, in a different direction than what we were. I don't know how long I'm supposed to do this I mean I did it to myself <laughs> Yeah that's on you buddy yeah. Yeah. Well, You know what are you going to do Sometimes you got to dress like this for you know? So sometimes you just got to get that attention that you so just desperately see. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, if you're living, you're living. <laughs> I mean, I do like the tattoos. If you want to give us some insight on the ink that you got, oh my mind. god, yeah, let's, let's there's more show and tell. I'd be down, yeah. <laughs> so you well, might as well let let's me see describe what, what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> For all the viewers, all the listeners at home, our friend Nick Kelly is wearing a red dress with uh, snowflakes? With sparkles. Snowflakes and sparkles. Sequin sparkles. Snowflakes. And he's about to describe in great detail his tattoos. I, I am also an Inca, but a firm Inca. A firm Inca. <laughs> <laughs> it's a firm. If you're looking to buy sports bras for his characters, uh, Inca. Or training ones. Yes. Um, training bras. <laughs> well, I mean, what do I have? I have this, uh, this quote from Thrice. I don't know if you guys have heard of that band. It's my favorite band of all time. This is a I want to write the perfect song and play it just for you. Okay. I got this clover because third time's a charm. I don't know. We got clovers in Pennsylvania for no reason. All of us. That, mm-hmm. was, that was gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah CTA CTV on my chest, which is definitely cool. Okay. Oh Jesus Christ! I got this one for my mom, which is like a hard thing kind of sleeping band just stuff because she takes care of me. Okay. And then uh, this medication, my other band, was almost signed. Okay. I got and I got I don't know like a whole bunch more. You got one. <laughs> Sorry, I have the Chicago flag. Oh, see, well, that, that's that's great. Mm-hmm. That that is awesome. It kind of sucks. I got my daughter's name on my leg, and then like, I don't even know what this is. It's like somebody I worked for, and I just like, <laughs> they paid for my drinks all night. So we get the company's name tattooed. I was like on my calf. I was like, sure. Fuck it. <laughs> so, you know, I ran up a two hundred sixty dollar bar tab, so it was a great. And they paid for the tattoo. I was like, you know, fuck it. <laughs> so I keep it. People like, will not do that. You so. should you should cover it. I'm like, no, no I'm not going to cover it. Because it reminds me of like that crazy shit that just happened out of nowhere, and uh, and I love telling that story. So that's now you got a good story. Out of it. Yeah, now you got a good and story. so and there's more. <laughs> we don't go there. Okay. Uh, did, did, I was about to say, do you have like a tattoo that just says your name? Tattooed on your ass? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's like so corny. Steve-O? Was that yeah, Steve-O? Steve-O. That tattoo? But, yeah. But, but, he also had a that was some portrait. rich, that was some yeah, rich white people shit right there for Steve-O. Yeah, like, just, just to have your name tattooed on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you just get a random name tattooed on your ass and then convince the person this is their name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eric, yes, you are. You are, you are Eric right. today. I got it tattooed on me. I know who you are, Derek. My name's Steve. No, your name is Derek. My name Your name is Derek. Today, just because this, that's the only way that this joke is going to work. Damn it! <laughs> that's me for fifteen years. <laughs> you were Derek today. 
Just, just, just do it as my wig man. Just do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> just do it. The, 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 the women will love this joke. Just please, bear with me right now. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how women do this. This is fucking uncomfortable. It doesn't even look good. Like I wouldn't bang anybody in this dress. <laughs> maybe, maybe after a couple of uh, uh, what, what, what are they called? Um, Whiskey sours. Probably. What's up, All eggnog shots. There oh, we go. Oh, okay. Some eggnog we just shots. Do some Everclear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And then I'll just do a Vin Diesel and fuck anything that's in front of me. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, he's bisexual. No, he's so strong that if he wants to fuck, he's going to fuck whatever's in front of him. <laughs> that, 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 that does remind me of the... Uh the Joe Rogan joke that he has about Brock Lesnar. Oh my just, god, that's <laughs> a joke. So, so basically he just talks about Brock Lesnar and he's just like a big, ma- massive just meat meet of a man. He's just like, please don't fuck me. Oh, <laughs> so, so, so he's just like, no, seriously. He literally could just, I could literally just say something about, about him and then he could just literally go, Brock smash! Ah! <laughs> Somebody else is talking shit about him and he's like, what? Just Brock just jumps out into the audience and just go, Brock smash! Ah! Yeah, that's funny. It's, oh, it's a good character quality. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there, I mean there's that, he's definitely been growing on me a lot more Brock now. Lesnar? Yeah, because... always liked Brock as a wrestler. I mean, as a wrestling what? fan, when he came back and like, or when he came out in 2002... I want to say it was his debut. Yeah, the when he WWE. just wrecked everybody. Yeah, like, yeah, I thought that was a big like just whoa. <laughs> this guy yeah, he's a, he's he a big shooting star press. He oh could do it. He was doing shooting star presses at Ohio Valley. Which, Wrestling. which I was, which I'm in my mind. I'm thinking this big motherfucker shouldn't be doing shit like this. <laughs> yep, yep. Right. Derek's right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the show is badass. <laughs> But, but yeah, especially when he gets to like some of his entertaining segments, and it's just like, okay, I really starting to appreciate him. Like oh, yeah, what, last year when he came out with, with the, the money in the bank boom box. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I, I was remember, like, the, the dad is, is a tattoo. Really. Oh, oh the, yeah, the, like the, 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 the sword, sword or whatever sword it is. Or whatever. Yeah. I was like, Why? Yeah, it's it was, like Mike Tyson when he got that tattoo. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we all love you. Now we're afraid of you. Well, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody my, my, that does that and makes those life decisions, you have to run from them. Yeah. They're going to hold the belt for a long time. Brock's the prize fighter and he knows it. That's why he got that big ass tattoo on his body. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. He's we're like saying, displaying like, himself. It's so weird. Yeah. Like, very, it's, it's, he, just, he has to show off you, if you you're that be, big, you, I guess. You I can't know. be right in the head to just be like, yeah, I want a knife, but I want it all. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> I want my whole front. But he's got his whole back tatted up, too. Yeah. I mean, well, but I mean, that tattoo looks like awesome. And it's kind of one of those things that it definitely does represent Kelly. Like the Beast Incarnate deal, but yeah. I do agree. The front, uh, like, sword tattoo when he came back with that, it was just like, where, and then where Scott this? Steiner copied him. I don't know, if oh, yeah, that, no, he got you're a big right, old right. purple heart yeah. involved with his chest what? sword. But, okay, oh, yeah, but, but to be <laughs> fair, he still has one of the greatest promos of all time. Well, and that Scott is, Steiner's the best. <laughs> <laughs> when he, when he teaches everybody math, that's that's when you know you got a great Scott Steiner promo oh, coming. Have you met him before? I have not. I think I'd be too scared to meet him just okay. because, <laughs> even though even though it's past 2003, I think that he, he would be one of those guys that would just literally. Pop my head off, even with uh, with just his two fingers. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a video of Noel Foley on his phone that she made for him. Yeah, there's. That, the, I, I, I basically have been telling him a lot of things that I've got the chance to do when it comes to meeting some of the wrestlers. Um, you got the video when you met him, or did you pay to have him make the video? Oh, for, with uh, Noel. Yeah. No. So what happened with that was that it was either third or it had to be my third year of doing podcasting. Um, I was doing donations for the charity group that she was working with, and the first donation I gave to her, I just said, hey, could you want, you mind following me back on Twitter? And she's like, yeah, I can do that. Second time around, I gave just a little more, and I thought, well, maybe I can kind of coax her into just possibly, you know, doing a podcast interview with, with me, and she said yes, and it's, re- it's really kind of funny. First time actually meeting her in person was amazing because the reaction she gave me when she found out who I was was just priceless. Yeah, yeah. So, so I Describe see the face. So I, I see her co- coming in and she is doing you know like she's setting up a table, getting autographs and all that kind of stuff. Of and you know sometimes there's people that will ask you know okay what's your name and you know how do you do that. Some even people are like, kind of rope you in like oh you like doing like anime too that's really cool. So. For, for me, it was amazing, because I just remember her asking me, well, what's your name? I said, Nate the effing great. And she's like, Nate, she slowly puts oh, her head up, so and funny. she's just like, you're Nate the effing great? It's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and, she, and she's like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Fuck so, 
And so anytime we meet up, she's always just like, Nate the effing great. It's always good seeing it. And I've also met her boyfriend, Frank the Clown, who okay. is just hilarious. Is he There's, funny? He's got to be funny. He, He's got to he, be something about I, him. So, my fr- so last year at StarCast, my friend Sarah actually took this video that Frank was doing. He was doing the dunk tank. Okay. And basically I was one of the first couple people that were able to go into this. So... Um, He's in the duct. He's trash talking. He's just going like Nate, the effing great. So it's, it's like a, that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. So I think it was like the first or the second ball in. I just remember slowly just getting closer and closer. And Frank immediately knows like no, no, no. no. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. one of those things where it's like I wish I could have just dunked his ass. <laughs> 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 but um, I, I missed all three of my balls. But it's one of those things where it's like eh, somebody else is going to get Frank in the water. It's fine. Plus Frank and I are cool. Um, yeah, the last time I saw him was this past year at C2E2. Who's Stuff. been the coolest wrestler that you've met so far? Oh. Like, interaction. Is, um, there has been a couple that definitely do stand out. Um, first time meeting Ms., uh, Ken Anderson. Okay, was Because um, basically what ends up happening From is Wisconsin, that, too. Yeah, that, 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 that's the cool part about it. So, uh, actually, that year I met him, like, three times oh, in, okay. like, a matter of months. And I said, I think the third time I said to him, "Dude, I swear I'm not stalking you." He's like, "Oh, dude, it's fine. I swear." We live in the same state. We live in the same state, same yeah. town. It's hard yeah, not yeah, to run into each other. But um, oh gosh, who was person that I think I've met would? Gosh, that. Mr. Yeah, I, I think Kennedy is still definitely like high top five because here's basically what happens: is I meet him. And you know we we do the talk, we do a little talk we have a idea where he t- signs the autograph do to photo that's it I'm thinking okay he's he's probably done with me I'm just gonna walk away I took two steps away and he just it's like hey what part of Wisconsin are you from he ropes me back in and we started conversating a bit more so really yeah it was kind of one of those things was like okay I'm not gonna. Yeah, normally, normally you don't get that from a lot of nope, the, no no you really don't you know, especially at one of the meet and greets you don't really get them to say more than hey I you know hey and that's it to you so yeah, for it's them really like that it really is, <laughs> it really is. It really is like last that. time I went to last time I went to a contract signing or you know a meet and greet hell they barely said two words to my ass so. uh, <laughs> depends how popular they are they shove you through like when I met Stan Lee it was literally Stand next to him, photo, leave. Like uh, I, I, I think I said something to him, like you know, with honor or something to meet him. Because he, I knew it was gonna be the last time we yeah. to meet him. Because I went, and then I think I think it was the next year he passed away. Damn, I seen that picture. Well, yeah. And so it, it was super quick, and like I'm not even making a great face because it was happening so fast. I was just like I was just trying to like side eye. I think I'm side eyeing because I'm looking at this great legendary man that I've yeah. idolized for years, and I'm just like this. Oh my god, but you couldn't touch him or anything. I mean, he was like 90 years old. Yeah, you know? no. But it was no, still, it was great. It was worth every penny to do it. No, but I you bet. couldn't like sit and chill with him. How much did they charge you for that? It was a birthday present, but I want to say it was like 120 or something like that. No, it's not pretty yeah, good. You not know, like, bad. so, I, yeah, I didn't actually have to pay for it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you didn't have to right. pay for it. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, but uh, if you had to, yeah, but right, I had to up, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I think I got it now. I think I got it. I think the coolest person I probably met was Rosa Mendez. Okay. Got, okay. She, um, and there's even like an enveloped story in line with this. So, basically just coming up to her, just being, she's super nice, super sweet. Um, and then, and then we just started, you know, t- talking a bit. And what's actually cool about it was that she was next to Gail Kim, so I got to talk to her and talk about, you know, would we ever see her back in WWE? And she's like, not happening, okay. because, you know, first time around she got the women's title, but then after that they kind of just made her feel like an afterthought. Second time around, mm. I that 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 hurt me emotionally. I'm just like, come on, why? Gail Kim is amazing. Why are you? Why are you treating her like this? Come on. Yeah, of all um, the girls they had in WWE, she really didn't get booked that well she did in not. that time where they didn't have very many. For some reason, they did kind of keep her down. It, it that's sucks. Kinda, that's kind of going back to just how she so, booked these days. They, they don't really know how to book, and so but, uh, they kind of go into panty mode. Right. But uh, so, so with Rosa, we just started kind of talking, and she made a joke about, about oh, oh, hey, you know, you what? If you want, if you want, you can give me some coffee. I'm just like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And she literally looked at me like. You serious? It's like, yeah, no, I'll definitely do it. So she she gave me a little bit of money, and uh, I think also Jeez. I think also Gail did the same thing. And next thing I knew, I was just getting coffee for 
Gail, for Gail Kim and Rosa Mendez, and that was kind of like the running joke between me and her was that you know, do you need coffee? It was like or something like that. And I think one other time she said yes, and then another time she's like, oh no, we are we good. So and there's a running and there was even a joke where I remember her say, saying, you know, I'm going to be a multimillionaire because I'm going to make this this uh, nutri- nutri- nutritious bar stuff like that. And I said to her, well, if you ever need an assistant, then you know. I'm, I'll be the first one that applies. She's like, oh, I'm counting on that. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. So nice. She, she was definitely the coolest. Uh, I think as far as women go, I think the coolest one that I got the chance to meet as far as guys go was probably Marty the Moth from Lucha Underground. Don't yeah, even know yeah. <laughs> uh, Definitely check out some of his stuff. He's got a couple matches on YouTube. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But he is just a really cool guy to meet up with. He can be a lunatic and in the best possible way but also there's a picture and it's so beautiful how we took this he's doing like his crazy pulling hair gimmick deal and in the background we have uh chris masters oh, okay <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't even know he's he that this is happening so there's one picture he's kind of looking down but then the second picture we take we're just kind of rocking out he's just back there he kind of has a look like oh <laughs> it's just yeah. it's just so funny just seeing that i'll show you guys the picture it's it's absolutely amazing. But getting back on... Well, actually, we were always going off track, so it doesn't even matter at this point. Yeah, we've been kind of off topic. So, I was going to tell you that I had one cool meet and greet with a wrestler that kind of goes in... Oh, pl- with oh please, by all means. Because you met Noel. Yeah. I met Mick Foley one time. Really? Who was literally my favorite wrestler. I, I thought about this a lot, and it was Shawn Michaels. It was The Undertaker. It's, it's Mick Foley. He's literally my favorite wrestler, my inspiration, in, in my opinion. I, I, and I, the only person I've ever read a book because of. I don't read books. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've read. What the fuck are you wearing now? I read all the books. Hey, hey, please feel free to follow along. <laughs> 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 um, is mankind like like three different people? Too? Yes, the three different faces of Foley. I yes, I love that. Yes. Mick, Mick Foley, so mankind, he, he wrote do a love, book. Cactus Jack. He wrote an oh, actual like a novel. Tedum Brown, if you've not read that, I would definitely recommend it. It's the best book ever written. It really is. <laughs> and uh, no, it's, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. And I had that since the day he wrote it or whatever. It came out, I bought it, and I had it for a very long time. And I found out he was coming to the Rockford Mall to do an oh. autograph signing. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have him sign my book. That, yeah. yeah. I was so <laughs> pumped that he had a new book that was coming out. It was a Christmas book. So I went and got that Christmas book, too. And Hayden, my son at the time was with me, and I'm like, bro, we're going to go meet the guy that wrote these books. And, you know, he's all excited, so we get there, and there's a whole fuckload of people. Of course, because it's I don't, Yeah, I don't like waiting in line at all. I'm really bad at it. So I kind of, like, made my way up to the front with Hayden, and we're just standing there in the front of the line, and Mick Foley comes walking right in, like, almost about the same time that I came walking. <laughs> it was really strange. So I literally w- w- waited for no minutes and Mick Foley walks in, and he's like, hey, guys, uh, I'll be right down there. I'm going to go give you something to drink. And I'm like, oh, shit, he's here. And from that moment on, I didn't even stop, move my spot. I was actually filming him at the time. He went and talked to somebody, came and sat back down, and he had me and Hayden come up, like, second. Out of all these people that were there, like, he, they didn't even care. He, like, he, he had seen my son. And all of a sudden, that was what captivated him. I'm like, oh, my God, and Hayden was holding this Christmas book. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was really no other kids around. It was a bunch of us fans, you know what I mean, but there was this guy here with the little boy, and he's like, come up here, and he took my son and sat him up pretty much on his lap, pulled his phone out, started scrolling through these pictures on his phone, teaching my son about Santa Claus, <laughs> telling him, like, if you're a good boy, Santa Claus is going to come or whatever and give you Christmas gifts and shit like that, and then he's like, here's the book that I wrote, da 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 he signed it to him and shit like that, and he's like, have a nice day, literally would have sat and talked to Hayden the whole time. I was trying to, like, get out of fan mode. Like, okay, we got it. <laughs> he was just enamored with the moment, putting on the show for all the people, watching him be Santa Claus to a kid. So, like, it was an out-of-body experience oh. meeting Mick Foley. Awesome. I, I, think, I think that out-of-body experience for me was um, meeting Nash Hall and what? X-Pac. So, okay, one, one, of my, one, of my, one of my friends, one of my friends up in uh, Wisconsin, Dave Hero, he is a, he's been just a huge wrestling fan he's also one of the promoters for one of the shows that are up there so every now and then he'll put up these like fan-made events with a lot of the wrestlers peering up and the first one i went to 
Got to meet people like uh, Melina, to the beautiful people. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa showed up like really the Beautiful late. people. I haven't heard about them in a long time. Who the hell they, were they? Uh, Angelina Love, hey, Velvet, Velvet Sky. Velvet Sky, yes. Yeah. I like <laughs> them. What the fuck are they doing these days? Um, I think that what I think one is still wrestling, one's kind of I I don't know. It's kind of like it's kind of like a mishmash kind of deal as to what what they're kind of doing, but they're they're nice try to people. get them on the wrestling show. Oh, that would be that would yeah, be an interesting. I think one. I, I could use that. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. Day comes, we're meeting up with Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, X-Pac, seeing everybody just kind of come in, and I'm just, like, awestruck, because these are three legends in wrestling. Uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, they signed uh, my Undisputed Belts, I believe it was. Oh, my and, God. Um, and then next thing I know, next thing I know, I'm me- meeting up with them, and I just remember, you know, shaking their hands, and they're just like, oh, hey, how's it going, man? And I'm just kind of like... Yeah. I, 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 my, 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 my mouth was just not working with me, and even my tongue was just kind of like... Yeah. I, I literally, that was the one time I felt like my tongue was just swollen. I just couldn't even talk to everybody. But yeah. I was able to be like, I like hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I could definitely relate. Meeting somebody that you know you've looked at and just kind of idolized for a bit definitely does hit you so hard when you meet them. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I have one more funny story actually. Oh, please. We're on meeting wrestlers. I met JBL one time, John Bradshaw Layfield. He's been wrestling for a long time. Yeah. He's, uh, Blackjack Bradshaw, I feel like, back in the oh, 90s when he started. You remember him, yeah. And uh, he had just won the championship, and he was going on tour, for, I guess, with uh, SmackDown and doing autograph signings in the towns they were in. And they were in Rockford for a show. And I was at school or whatever, but he was supposed to be there during lunchtime. So I just left school, and I went to Disc Replay or GameStop, one or the other, and uh, there was nobody there, nobody at all, except JBL, sitting there at a the table. So I walked in, I'm like, fuck yeah! I walked over to him thinking I was going to be able to have a conversation with him, and I asked him, uh, I, I bought the picture that they had or whatever, and had him sign it, and I asked him a question, you know, can I see your scar on your forehead? And like, for whatever reason, he didn't like that question. <laughs> and he like, took his hat up a little bit, and showed me his scar, and I'm like, bro, I can't believe the, all the Undertaker smashed you with a chair like that. Didn't say nothing. Went back down looking at his shit, and he said, can I get a Dr. Pepper? <laughs> and just kept on sitting there. So I, like, waited back in this replay for a little bit, you know, to see if he was going to, like, be calm and nice to other people. And a couple other people came in, he signed their shit, and just went, like, right back to looking down. So, like, I, I could have had a cool moment with JBL, but right. he just seemed like a stick in the mud almost. I, I've, heard, I've heard that story, too, whether it's backstage or just interacting with people. But uh, speaking of interacting with people, that is kind of what brought the relationship between you and me is because of this gentleman right here. Why it's old. Here's a question that I have is how did you guys, you know, meet and how did you guys kind of pit off? Because you, you mentioned me when Nick is one of your recurring characters for MFML and now recently definitely do see that with uh, Matt and Kate Jones. But how did you guys, you know, first initially meet and how did that relationship kind of start? I know what episode it was, but I don't remember how I actually met him. I, I, well, I didn't meet him. I, I, we were friends on Facebook for some reason. I don't know if it's because of the music scene or how we connected. That I don't remember. But the first episode was a Christmas episode, and it was mm-hmm. your first one, and it was Jessica McShane's first one. Mm-hmm. And I never met him before. He had a man bun at the time. And he oh, okay. did a joke, and he showed up. <laughs> and it was about him buying a PlayStation for his girlfriend... But it was really for him, and that's what the episode was about. And he was funny right off the bat, and uh, made us all laugh, and he was great. You know, I can I didn't work with either one before. They were both so fantastic. But for some reason, it was a while before we got did more. Like I don't, I I think he was going through some. I was stuff. really trying to do music. Was I, I was just I was trying to be a musician, and I thought yeah. if I went and did an episode of FML, I might be able to draw more attention to the music scene. Only problem was I couldn't play the guitar and I was horrible at songwriting <laughs> and I couldn't sing. So I had all these bad things going for me. I think negative. you might have seen one of your short films or something too. It may have been that. I don't know. Okay, yeah, maybe. Somehow, I think I did have. I had music videos out that were halfway short films. A lot of yeah, the stuff was. I remember some music of that. video. And yeah. then, yeah, and then I think the next one he did was the Quickie one where uh, you break up with Becky or, or Becky breaks up with you. I like remember. years later, maybe. It was years later, yeah. We didn't. We did that one, and he was almost a one-timer. Like, I, I don't know. Like I said, it just... Yeah, how the hell did we even get reconnected? 
No, I, I know what happened. I, I just reached back. Oh, I so remember. You invited us I, over to your podcast. I, yeah, no, you I, had, we, you had a, a I did do show. that. I was trying That's to make a show was. one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Googled Rockford uh, Locals or something. Rockford Local Artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I was trying was. to interview people. So I inter- actually interviewed you and Chris. I completely forgot. Yeah. Yeah. I f- yep. that comes up my time up every once in a while. Like I think it's is yeah. it on YouTube. No, fuck no. no. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. might be. I have had a lot of YouTube channels get deleted, right. and some I just that, don't even fuck with anymore. So yeah, I think that was when we reconnected, and then it was like a year later after that because I was really busy with the Dedersons at the time, and I think it was about a year after that that we filmed again, and then and then we made an episode at the food place, the pizza or no, the Katie's Pie Shop. Yes. And that, that lady, yep, yep, and, and no, and the girl took a dump in the bathroom, and it got a whole yes. shit ton of views. Yeah, that was Kaylee. Yeah, yes, Kaylee, yes. Call of Duty 2. Yeah, that video. Over a million views. Yep, and I and met Alex for the first time yep. that night, too, yep. and we really, we had fun. It was that, really We fun. had fun that night, it and was that really was when I'm fun. like, you know what? I like Wyatt because I felt like before I did we didn't really know each other. Like no. you said, we we I, I did an interview with you and you had me on an episode. Yeah. So we didn't really know each other that no, well, but that we was, actually became friends at that the was pie a shop. Fun night. That yes. was a, we just filmed the one episode and we, everybody had a lot of fun with it. They were all putting their ideas. That's where the there there, there was a, a ongoing gag with him. Where every time we filmed at the Kate's Pie Shop, which unfortunately is not there anymore, oh. but. He yeah. would. We, he made this gag where he liked the the notorious V E G sandwich, mm-hmm. and it was never available. But he, he wanted it every time. It every time, yeah. And it was for whatever reason it wasn't ever. So the last one we did, which was Call of Duty Three, he has a cameo in it where he's complaining. To, and it's the first. I think it's Kate's first episode. But you just see the back of her head. And Kate was there. Oh, he's complaining. About that. Yeah, we're not coming back here anymore. They're in the VG. And it's just a little quick little gag in there. That's funny. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's funny. And yeah, then ever since then, he came over one time to help us film, and he dressed up like Ric Flair. I'm like, yep, we'll use Wyatt on the rest okay, of the show. To be fair, I didn't know I was going to dress as Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you want to do Ric Flair? Yeah. And I'm like, I really don't think I look like Ric Flair. <laughs> Who like, cares? I don't care. <laughs> and our buddy Aaron was there, and he was Hulk Hogan, yep. and we were commentary buddies, and yeah, it was right. just fun. And so I, you know, not much of an actor, but I don't mind it. And so then I suggested to him, I was like, I think I'd be a better fit for Sergeant Slaughter. Can you fit him in? <laughs> and Sergeant Slaughter is a childhood hero to me because he wasn't, I, I wasn't ever huge into wrestling, but he was on G.I. Joe. And I okay. really like G.I. Joe. So mm-hmm. I knew him and I knew I could do the voice and everything. And so that was the, my best character. I He's think. still known for his Sergeant Slaughter. Like my father in law doesn't call him Wyatt, he calls him Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarge. Well, what's yeah. up, Sarge? Yeah. <laughs> I did, I, as much as I could, I really grew out the mustache, shaved the rest of my beard. Every time, I, every time I, I do go. appreciate the commitment on yeah. that. That's yes, awesome. Every time he showed up to build, it. it was in gear. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> Even up to the military boots, I feel like you wore those fuckers yeah. for a while, too. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 then it was funny because I would forget and I would go out afterwards and go to the store or go to the drive through <laughs> People would give you a look, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Am uh, I still we, the Sarge? <laughs> yeah, oh shit. I can't remember. <laughs> Cops left me alone, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you wanted them on Buck Off Duty or some shit. Hey, nice mustache, buddy. Nice, nice mustache. <laughs> See you tomorrow at the forest. Wait, I don't know that guy. <laughs> yeah, I do want to chime in a little bit. I didn't want to interrupt you guys, but I wanted to chime in a little bit about meeting somebody that just kind of, like, made you, you know. Oh, and I've never had that in my life until I met Kevin Smith. And oh, yeah. a little backstory on it. The first time I kind of sort of met him was I was at Wizard World, the Comic Con in Chicago. Okay. And he used to have a booth there, and then he was kind of known cool. throughout the, the the con that he would show up at some point in his booth. So I remember I was there, and I would kept watching for it, and nothing happened all day. So on our way out, I was with my brother at the time, and I saw a crowd around his booth. So I ran up there. Sure enough, there's people. He's signing things and handing it back. And I was like... The guy, the clerk, give me that shirt, and I think I bought an action figure. And I threw him the money, and I threw it back to Kevin Smith. And he signed him and threw him back. He didn't beat him, but it was there. And I've had this shirt for like 15 years. And then all of a sudden, at the Jay and Silent Bob reboot okay. premiere in Chicago, I got, you know, it was paid it was like $50 a ticket, you know, and he's going to get there and he makes his speech and stuff. And so at the end, he's got questions, but things they decided to add a second showing, so they didn't have as long a Q&A anymore. 
And so, you know, Chris, I went with Chris, and we were sitting there, and then, and I first told her, I was like, you want to ask him a question? Because people were lining up at the mic, and she was like, no. And I was like, well, I'm not, I sat there, only one guy was lining up, and I saw more people coming, and I'm sitting right here, it's right by me, so I'm like, I gotta do this. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Yeah. I just yeah. jumped in front of the mic, and nice. I was there. They waited there. I laid there, and it was my turn, he called upon me, and I just said, and I, and I just told him, I said that he was a big inspiration for me growing up, and that, I mean, and that Clerks, and I, I'm a filmmaker now, and, you know, and I told him the story about the shirt, and I, I, and I wore that shirt that day for the first time ever, and his signature was on it, Nice. and... And but bef- and I and all I was telling him is that what an, what an idol he was to me. And then he goes, he laughed and he goes, "Well, that's not really a question. Do you have a question?" He was like, "Thank you, I appreciate it. You know, I'm not, <laughs> right. I, I love you, but what's your question?" And I go, um, "I told him about the shirt, and I said, would you sign it again?'" <laughs> and, he's like, and he goes, "Yeah, come on up here." <laughs> that's so awesome. He calls me up on stage. And Jason Mewes is there too. Dude. And I'm like shaking. And I, I go upstairs bet. and uh, he goes, do you have a marker? <laughs> and I'm like, I wasn't prepared for this. And they were <laughs> laughing at me because you want an autograph and you don't bring a marker and you didn't come prepared. That's so Luckily funny. enough, one of my filmmaking friends was there and uh, he, he came, just so happened to have a marker. He came run up to me. Well, yeah, because he, he had paid the extra oh. for the signature, so he did come prepared. Nice. And he came running up to me. He goes, I have a marker, hand it to me. And he whispers to me, tell him I'm one of your actors. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> <laughs> and he and he, Jason, you signed it, and he signed it. So now I've got the shirt with two signatures of Kevin Smith, and like 15 years apart, and then one of uh, Jason Mews. And... Uh, I didn't know what to do afterwards. I just thanked him. Yeah. And he said, come on in. And he gave me a hug. Dang. Oh. And I was just... It was, uh, uh, I enough Chris is down there getting all these pictures because it was all blurred. Yeah, I was just... <laughs> it was all an absolute oh, blur man. to me. As I was listening to that story, all I could think is, like, I would never shower again. I would never shower again. Kevin Smith touched me. I'm basically uh, going right. to heaven. At this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some I, version I, of it. It was so nice. And, yeah. you know, it was fantastic. Did you guys have some good wrestler stories? Those are... As, that's interesting as fuck. It, right. uh, so, Especially uh, Mick Foley, like, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, yeah. That's that's cool. Cool. I'd like that to far. That would be cool. Foley is de- definitely one of the nicest people that... He showed up in sweatpants. Yeah, he did show up in sweatpants. Yeah, I'm gonna be hilarious if I gave him one of my socks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would face I, I, I think he would actually. I, he, yeah. he, he actually. I think he actually did. Oh, yeah. I think he actually did have like a bunch of uh, sacos prepared at his table That's one awesome. time to just be, sign off and just take photos. That it was awesome. That's I didn't do it. I didn't have the mic at the time, but I feel like now I would. One time at Comic Con, uh, Billy D. Williams was there. Oh, and I wanted. Of course, you had to pay to do it, but I wanted. To, I wanted to bring a pillow. And have him right, sign right. the cool side of the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's amazing. I wanted, I, wanted, I, said, I wanted to give a pillow, but you signed this. Yeah, why? Yeah. Why? It's the cool so, side of the pillow. So I, def- I definitely do want to do this because it might put people on the spot. There might be some people that be mad, but at the same time, let, let's stir up a little bit of this the conversation. Fun. It does. Right. So since you since why you definitely are you know known for a lot for you know the series that you. Definitely, that I've talked about over the years, you know, Debtor Sins, FML, mm-hmm. and you, you have a new, I mean, Matt and I were just talking before we even started recording that you have a new project possibly coming out for, uh, was it, you said like a horror type deal? Yeah, there? yeah, if you want to bring that up, I'm sure we'd love to talk about it. <laughs> so, uh, not a lot about it, because it's still in development, what I want to do, there's a lot of, um... But he's I, excited to I, know. I, I'm anticipating... A lot of horror shorts this Halloween because I got lots of them that I want to. He do. wants to know about bones. Yeah, okay. About bones. Bones is uh, well, you know the character on yes. the show. Now that's kind of a, a spinoff of it, but bones started as a joke, and we did an FML a couple of Halloweens ago where it was about a guy. Wanting to show his girlfriend his, his favorite horror movie called Bones Out. I purposely wanted to oh. be made up because I it's supposed to be the scariest movie ever, and she doesn't like horror movies, and he thinks it's going to be funny to watch her squirm when in reality she thinks it's hilarious and he's scared to death. <laughs> so that, that is awesome. So oh, that yeah. was the episode, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we actually filmed a fake horror scene to show that they were watching, and um, Alex Alex 
was available, and I was like, because I, I was originally, you know, just going to do a default dude, you know, as the killer or whatever, but I was like, no, why not, you know, let's have, Alex is this big, you know, the medicine, largest medicine female woman, in the you know? universe, she's and she, the she's the nicest thing in the world, right. but she's a big, I'm like, she's that, 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 that's a killer right there, and she loves horror movies, so when I offered her the part, she was like, all for yes, it. <laughs> oh my god, and so, and then I found that thing at the Halloween store, there it is right there, the bone saw. I hold it up for yeah, all the fans to see. For all the fans to not see, yeah. Oh, that, that, that's her that's weapon of choice. We really wow. didn't show and tell today. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> passing around now, it's, it's like. Yeah. And, and so we decided to make it an ongoing gag. Okay. Every time someone's talking about a movie yeah, in the NFL, it's point. bone mm. saw, just like when they're eating something, it's breed of barn, and so forth. And so... It's become, and as over the years, I've actually developed an actual story for it. <laughs> and so I would actually like to film uh, a short or a film or whatever. I have to actually write it. And everything. A trilogy. Yep. Eventually a trilogy, <laughs> probably, yeah, for sure. I already have the t- first two kind of mapped out. Okay. Nice. Can I be in it? I go I, <laughs> everybody <laughs> should yeah. be in it. Like Every single person it. we've worked like, with. I, it's evolved so, now that it, evolved so much now that it's evolved so much now that I actually the first movie is going to actually also be a flashback to her parents and it shows how she got uh, started and her parents are kind of like this Mickey and Mallory type characters and Kate it, and I Kate and him <laughs> and it's yeah. got it's got to turn out that her weapon is her dad's head oh, that she fuck. uses and yes. the weapon actually talks to her still and that's but, how, you know Mikey can you do me a favor can you just put that right next to his head because I actually want to see if it. Pretty good, pretty good. It, 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 it is pretty close. It's it's close. Closer to the one it my arm. Like <laughs> and that's the one that when we actually filmed it, um, Chris painted that, added the skin to it. Yeah, there's actually skin, oh my flesh gosh, there's on the skull. Of it. Oh my gosh, that yeah. is awesome. Perfect for yeah. close ups. It yeah. is. And then we have one that's a non painted one as okay. well. Uh, every Halloween, I'm just going to keep buying them so that way. <laughs> if we destroy them and everything, we'll have more. Yeah, you got like a backup. So, so, oh, oh, getting back to what I was saying say, say before, but also, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing that series. So, going to put everybody on the spot. Yeah, Favorite FML episode. Oh, I mean, it could be one that you've possibly been in. It could be one that you're not in. But what's one that definitely stands out to you as in pretty awesome one. I know I'm going to be putting Wyatt on the spot because... Oh, damn. Yeah, that is a good question. Because I'm, I'm okay with this question because I have, I've been meaning to do this for a while. I'm going to make an actual video where I do... Like a I top... tell people my top ten favorite okay. ones. Oh, I'm also going to yeah. tell my top ten not favorite ones because there are out there. I, there are episodes that are out there that I don't like. I for one reason I, or another. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave that one to you. Yeah. Leave that one to you we'll because to keep people in suspense. But, but yeah, like, what, like what's one of your favorites that you definitely enjoyed filming and you definitely enjoyed... Yeah, the ones that become my favorites are not the ones that get a lot of views, because the ones that are my favorites are, uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of them. Season one, uh, there was one that was called Give Me a Hand, and it was about a girl going to an elevator, and she says she's on her, she's texting on her phone, and she says, would you mind hitting the button for me? Turns out the guy has no arms. And so oh. the guy, oh, uh, no. the guy was played by my friend Steve, who uh, people that know, no, he was uh, my original partner in Notebook, and he did um, Above Average Man and John Rainbow. Wow. He was really funny, and he, we had a suit on him with no arms, and so he was, sure, I would love to, and he's trying to, like, hit the buttons with no <laughs> arms really and flaring so around. Oh, it's so funny. We were laughing so hard that we were playing in my, we were filmed in my old apartment in the elevator, and the people could hear us down the elevator shaft, like downstairs, <laughs> we were laughing so hard. That that one's an all time that that one's one of all time favorites. I also love from uh, season three, I believe it is. There's one that's called Eight Legged Freakout, and it's a simple story oh, about a, about too. a girl, Mandy, who finds a spider and she has a boyfriend. <laughs> you gotta you know give her the spider, and every time he goes to kill, he's gonna flush it down the toilet, throw it out the window, whatever. She goes, don't kill it, and so he goes through all these things trying to get rid of the spider. Safely, right? There's one the spider there, but she doesn't want him dead either. <laughs> so, uh, uh, that's that's that, that, that is amazing. I like that character. So funny. Uh, I love that one too. Yeah. One of the season nine, uh, the one with Jean Claude Van Damme is a classic. That was the first <laughs> time I read to work with green screen. Okay, I've seen that one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's check it out. It's called uh, Jean Claude Van Dad, and it's about <laughs> a girl bringing a boy home for, to meet the parents, and before she brings him in, she goes. I got a warning about my dad. He thinks he's Jean-Claude Van Damme. 
Jean Claude Van Damme, which is it, it, it really it's is awesome. Jean Claude Van Damme, but he wasn't there filming it. He had released right. his green screen footage okay. for anybody to use. It's super fun. And so That's I had great. made it about Jean Claude Van Damme's obsessed with getting this fly in his house, and he's got he's trying to eat. He's got machine gun. It's just it's funny as fuck. It looks pretty legit. And uh, yeah, that's a definitely classic. <laughs> that's funny. Damn, damn, I'm I'm have to look up. I'm looked up um, some of these. The uh, off the top of my head, that Christmas wrestling one we did it is really a great one. I love that one. That one turned out great. I also didn't see that one. Um, I didn't know that. No. that one was called like Fight the Family or something. Something. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What season is that one? That's the holiday episode. So you have to, there's a holiday episode playlist. There's a Christmas episode playlist. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Christmas episodes are just. Yeah, great. I could go on, but the, those are the ones that I like. I like the ones that are have the, the, the just. You guys were laughing at me just telling you the concept of them. You know, okay. like sometimes those outrageous concepts. The one we filmed today has potential of being a great one. I don't know until I edit it and figure it out. Right. Yeah. But like, um, it's you know, there was one we did in season. four Four, that I think it was the opener that reminds me of this one. It was very simple. It was about a girl taking a junky table out of her garage, puts it up front with a free sign on. Yeah. It, she just takes a junkie and puts yeah. it outside. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Stay outside there, junkie. <laughs> hold the table. She puts it out there, puts a free sign on, and walks away. Her neighbor, Danny Graham, sees it. He walks up, takes it, puts it on his side of the of the of the yard and puts a fifty dollar price tag on it. Guy drives up, buys it from him right in front of her. That's funny. And she's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> oh, that's funny. So when that's I ed- funny. when I edited that one, I was like, "This would be a funny silent film," and so it wasn't intended that way. <laughs> that's why oh, I oh, oh, oh. the silent film. Right? That's, that's funny. amazing. And that's then for funny. the ten year anniversary, I finally released it with the original audio. Oh, that that is sweet. That's, cool. that's amazing. So. Nick, you're up on the chopping block. I mean, I, like I have like quite a few. I, I would say like um, the the hundredth episode is probably one of my favorites. It was really wild because you know we all had a good time inside. A, like we were at your house at the time. It was right? my condo. Yeah, yeah, your condo. We were just kind of like he, the whole premise of the episode is he was going around doing multiple FMLs throughout this party, mm-hmm. and uh, I was with his brother on the stairs, uh, and we were talking about this girl that we were like that we all hooked up with, where you know that we both they were like. We're like, this is awesome. I met this girl's party. She's like, she's so hot. And he's like, dude, I met this girl too, and I totally banged her, and it was fucking crazy. And he's like, what was her name? I was like, her name wasn't at the same time. We go, Jenna. Uh, <laughs> oh fuck, we both banged Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, oh go ahead. No, no, there's a lot of cool continuity in that one because you know, he like then he'll go up the stairs and then go see like talk to two other people or see other other people doing their thing and in the bathroom and then this and that <laughs> and it's all just all just fluid all together. Nice, <laughs> nice. Awesome. Do you remember the episode though? I, I guess, dude, I love this one. I, I remember because we were just so silly. We filmed for so long because I couldn't. The laundromat one. Yes, I, yes. I, I couldn't just fucking sit yes. still and not be. The funny. laundromat one. Yeah. Where, there's a, okay. There are a few times where I lose it on set because it was <laughs> so funny, and That's I'm the one who breaks the scene, and I'm the one that you know makes the blooper, and that was one of them. Dang. It was so fucking funny. I, I couldn't it's, stop. It was called <laughs> Flirting with Disaster, and basically a guy and girl are doing their laundry in a laundromat, and they you know flirting and stuff and then she steps out for whatever reason and he s- opens up her dryer and starts stealing all of her clothes and she comes I've back I've seen the episode and she comes I've back in that. and his arms are just full of her clothes yeah. and just the way there was a one shot where he climbed in the dryer and yeah they kept spinning me they started <laughs> spinning me so I'm literally I'm so inside the dryer I barely fit like, no. yeah. oh, yeah. the bloopers for that season which I want to say is season 3 has a lot of all that stuff oh, I gosh. ruined so many shots yeah, I so did I his just purpose. reaction to what do you you know you steal my clothes one time he had the bra in his mouth he goes <laughs> no <laughs> 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 Who the hell takes clothes? I'm in the I'm in the hallway and I, like at the end scene yeah. for, or the real one is I look in and I have her clothes in my hand and then I just take off running down the hall. But in the outtakes, I grab it and I go, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. What a disaster! Oh my god! It's creepy like that guy in Little Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, oh my man. gosh! That's yeah. amazing. Sorry, right, nipples. <laughs> Matt, do you have a favorite? My favorite episode stars yep. my good friend Mikey518. We just uh, released it 
on 420 this uh, year. Yeah. We actually <laughs> filmed it on. last year. We weren't even planning on making this episode. No. We saw it to film something completely different, but this guy had drove it all the way from Chicago. His name escapes me. Wyatt Sean. knows it. Sean. He showed up, and you know he's all ready to go. One of the greatest actors that I know. Yeah, we were supposed really to film good. the Fourth of July episode, but she got sick or something, and so we were left hanging. Yeah, yeah, and he's all there, like ready to film. I'm like, we'll, we'll come up with something. So we yeah. come up with this idea. We made up on the spot. Yeah, where, where he's supposed to be getting weed or whatever from Mikey. Who we came up with this character, which was called like Big Mac yeah, or yeah. something like. Was that what we were calling uh, it? Big no, Mac? Quarter Pounder. Quarter, quarter Pounder. pounder. Quarter Q- pounder. Q- yeah, we were calling Q P for short. Yeah, Q-P. Q-P. Yes, yes. And all of a sudden, he pulls out these cure eggs that are full of different strands of weed for this new guy who's never smoked before to <laughs> pick out of. Yes, and, and they're all that right. And yes. the reason yeah, yes. the Keurig, so the reason for the Keurig is we weren't prepared, right? Yeah. We weren't even at my house. We were at my friend's house that I house sit. And so we were like, what are we going to use for weed, you know? And he goes, "My he happened to have a jar of Keurig things, and he goes this. And well, like, because first of all, when you're trying to film something, you're going to look for the most obnoxious thing possible. And it was great. I think it was brilliant. It was though. a huge bin of Keurigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He explained them, and Mike yeah, just starts talking about how they're all... After fast like, food, this is the filet yeah, fish with yeah, cheese. All after, they're, they're, every strand was named after fast food. So he was like, <laughs> "Yeah, this is the uh, filet fish. This is the Big Mac right here. This is the uh, quarter pounder with <laughs> cheese, <Yeah>. without <laughs> cheese. <laughs> right, this is the double stack right here. Right, and at one point, Sean's like, "What about the Whopper?" And Mikey's like, "Whoa, whoa." Yeah, whoa. We don't talk about that Whopper. <laughs> and then, like, somebody in the comments goes, I can't wait to see the episode about the Whopper, yeah. or whatever the yeah, was. So, like, the people were interacting with the dialogue, which made it good. And then Wyatt's, like, going back and forth to being inside of Sean's mind, because he's never been stolen before. He's getting high while we're talking about all these different fast food flavored weeds. He starts thinking that we're going to kill him. So he goes running outside <laughs> in the backyard, hiding while we're chasing after him. Like, Well, the reason why I thought he was killing him, because I said, did you tell him why you brought him over here? And he's like, no, <laughs> Don't t- we don't we don't have to talk about this right now. No, you brought him over here for a job. <laughs> I need you guys to do this job. There was a big hole in the backyard. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's there a dig a hole for a pool. Yeah, but he doesn't know that. Sean and thinks we're gonna dig a hole, hole to bury him. And in. Sean's this like nerdy white boy who's just you know <laughs> panicking over because he. Even, it, I know you guys can't see this, but it was really funny the way he improv this. He went to smoke the weed. And he's trying to light it like a crack pipe. Yes, he underneath. Yes, yes. And he saw that yes. on TV, so he's sitting yes. there going like this. So it's, fucking it's, funny. Yeah, some of the shots. And he got. And supposedly the character got like one little inhale and just made him paranoid as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're chasing him in the woods at the end, and it's. I that episode was so just random that it took me a while to air it because I was actually afraid that it wasn't going to make any sense that it didn't turn out well. Because so, even at the end, he goes back inside and gets stoned again. Yeah. Like, the whole thing starts over again. Yeah, He starts thinking we're right going to chase him again. and kill him again. Yeah, it's so it's so, really good. By the time I actually edited it, I needed a 420 episode, and it was perfect. It, I love it so much, we're talking about doing sequels of these characters. So. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Like, there's got to be a line so where it's like, good. well, we don't talk about the Whopper since the incident. You're like, what's the incident? They go, ever since the incident, we don't talk about it. <laughs> basically, what yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah, like, like, literally. Because everybody just went. got silent, and Mikey goes, we don't talk about that no more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, and then, and then the camera zooms in. Because yeah. he had said it the one time, and we didn't know he was going to say that, but he said it. And the second take, I'm like, you have to keep that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Improv has always been that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, uh, Mikey, you're up. <laughs> ah, see, well, he already took my part. Oh, he took my part. Hey, there we go. <laughs> but so, I was, so I was so in my just... second favorite FML. Ah. Well, you watch them, too. So just... Yeah, right. <laughs> I watch them, so I, but I have a hard time remembering if I don't wa- watch them, like, more than once. Oh, yeah. okay. So I would have so, to really... I would say this. I would say that last one I recently did with... Uh, we made kind of a fun of Dumb and Dumber... Oh and, yeah, yeah. And, oh, like, I, yeah, 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 bird. Well, was yeah. It? Yeah. it wasn't that scene, but it was the diarrhea scene. The diarrhea scene. And literally, I play, oh, I, I play this guy, and you know, where you know, I'm just like, yeah, girl, you know, that's cool. Go to the bathroom. Oh, by the way, that toilet's broken, so don't try to fix it. Don't try to flush it while you're in there, because he was in there for a very long time. So I'm thinking, oh no, it's 
girl thing. She, you know, fix her makeup, she, whatnot. She, she destroyed it. And she yeah. destroyed the bathroom. And I was like, yeah. And I thought, wouldn't we going to have a, a secret, another scene that go about that, the way it was going to be, you know, the uh, next day or something like that, me fans, having her clean that up or something the, like that? The, the fans want a sequel because the episode was set up where her... They both had met Mike at the bar previously. Oh. It doesn't show that, but the but and Mikey called the one girl instead of the other one. So and so out of revenge, she spiked her her so her victory drink when Mikey asked her out oh. with a uh, with laxative. So that's why she destroys the toilet. So the fans want to see a sequel where she gets revenge on her on her friend. Of course, <laughs> eventually we probably will do that. Um, so I would say, yeah, that's part of my, uh, those are my two favorite episodes. Um, that episode we did last summer, or was it, last, well, no, was it Memorial Day? The Easter one? The Easter one, yeah. Fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that was a good yeah. one. I, like, I enjoy the, we've done three wrestling ones now, right, I think? I yeah, so. that's yeah. Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah. We put uh, Aaron through that table. That was uh, yeah. yeah, our table. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was good too. Oh, um, speaking of stunts, this is an all-time classic favorite of mine, and, and people have seen it. It comes up a lot. Mm-hmm. I think it's season two, uh, and it's called "Hit Me with Your Best Shot." It's a, it's a quickie, oh, and it's no. basically a guy and a girl are walking down the street, and then the 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 guy sees a car coming and he's on the opposite side, so he moves and pushes her back for safety. And then she thinks she's playing around, so she shoves him back right into the car. And and the way we shot that was my brother Mike was was the driver of the car. He had this old beater car at the time, and so the guy that played the guy was a Rockford Speedway driver, and he also wanted you know, dabbled in stunts and wanted to do stunt work, so I was like, I'll put you to work. So we drove the car at like three miles an hour and just roll. He rolled over the top of it, and then I sped it up right at the point of impact. Oh. So the, what's great about it is the, the noises you hear of him going over the car is all legit. real. It's all real. It's just sped up a bit, wow. and so and it, it happens so fast where she shoves him and bam, he gets hit by the car. And nobody sees it coming. Oh God! Yeah, it's, it's legit. And wow, that was a fun one. You know, for those of you listening, I got you know why it really shoved me in the middle of showing this. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I don't know if I want to be in this restaurant. <laughs> you guys really play rough. So, so I, I, will, I will say this because Wyatt and I have been talking about trying to get me in one of the episodes for a while now. Wow, and it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. going to happen. I'm promising you before the year's over, we're getting All me right. in an FML Bring episode. Tomorrow night? <laughs> He's free tomorrow night? Tomorrow. Well, I mean, well, I mean, we, we're tomorrow? watching the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's backlash yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, How long are you in town? Next, next time. I, I mean, I'm next here. Time. I'm here till Monday morning. Then I have to. Oh, okay. Go back. Yeah, over. Tomorrow Let's night would be over. the only time I could probably because tomorrow afternoon I'm already filming one. So yeah. Tomorrow night I could probably. Well, we'll do. We'll do it the next time I come back around yeah. when it's a little more more convenient. But um, so one idea that I actually had for him was actually a bit of a wrestling related one, and this was actually what sparked the conversation for him to say, "Hey, I have this friend who actually does a wrestling show. Okay. You should." doing so the idea that i had was that uh kind of parroting off of the one that you did with kate where you're playing video games she's trying to get you get you in the bed in the bed and oh yeah it's like everything everything and you're just like i'm playing the fucking game right now yeah 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 (laughs) that that is one of my all-time favorites i'll tell you one other one after i tell this story but um the but basically i had like a parody off of that where I like I'm either watching wrestling or just something like that, something distracting me. She's basically, th- she basically just whispers sup- something in my ear, and I'm just like, "I'll be right back." You <laughs> just go right in the kitchen, and she's oh no way, I'm I'm like shining two belts. That's right. Oh, that was kind of yeah. the inspiration for that. Shining I, two belts. Yeah, two so, belts. So, yeah, just sh- just sh- just shining two belts. It's like tag team belts or something like okay, that. Okay. Or whatever. Or whatever we 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 just what I decided to bring down next time, but um. The idea was ba- basically, you know, I'm shy in that. She's basically wanting attention. She whispers something in my ear, and I'm just like, I'll be right back. <laughs> so just go out, go out, and then she gets this I- idea. I come back. She's literally got the belts covering her her, her breasts as well as her her bottoms, I guess. <laughs> and, and basically, I'm just like, no! Why? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, Guys you know, will go crazy for women that, that with it, uh, naked bodies and belts on. That, 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 that the inside know, joke is 
the, 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 <laughs> but, the, but the joke is is that I care more about the belts. About and the she's belts, yeah. she's basically ruining it. Uh, don't yeah, put that thing that. down there. So fucking tight. That that was the idea that kind of sparked the idea for. Uh, to, to meet up with you because okay. I, I don't know if, I don't know if at that, that point there was some reason I felt like you were just getting annoyed that I was coming up with these random ideas no, or something like no it was probably I just because I, I get all my messages on my phone so if I ever don't respond right away it's probably because I'm either on set okay. or I'm doing something where I can't respond or right. whatever so also, know, people send me ideas all the time I don't ever get annoyed by them. the fans send ideas too. also I will, I will say this that I do love some of the blooper reels where you do definitely <laughs> Have those moments where you're either kind of chuckling or it's like, okay, let's do this again. It's like, you know, if this was another person saying that line, I'd be kind of freaking out like, okay, this guy is creepy. But this is why he knows what he's doing. I think I did that to me. You guys are not fucked up. Yeah. Well, it's just one of those things where it's like... He's got a way to make you feel comfortable. Right, exactly. You're not uncomfortable. It's, it's, it's like, give a girl a spike. I don't think I did that right. Let me try it again. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fucking yeah. true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Let me try it one more time. Well, it's, it's fascinating. It's interesting because I get this a lot where I'll have friends or whatever and be like, you're like the luckiest guy in the world or whatever. And I'm just like, it's never that way when you're filming it. Right. When you're filming it, it's always just about what's happening. I'm, I'm concerned about the shot. I'm concerned about what is showing. I'm concerned about the acting. I'm concerned about the lighting. All that. And it, it, you're not ever, it's never hot. It's never sexy. It's never <laughs> anything. In that moment when you're filming it, you're trying to just focus on so many other things that it, it, it's technical. Right. It's so technical. And so I, sometimes I do, I say the strangest fucking things on set and they do end up in the bloopers. Like I remember, yeah. I remember one time, I lo- and it's become kind of a joke where sometimes I, so I remember one of the bloopers, like my direction was like, okay, now bend over. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you hear yourself say oh, these yeah. things. You hear yeah. yourself say these things. It's like, Put that thing in, in there. Context. Yeah. In context, context, we get what you're saying. Right. But out of context, it's like, say what? Yeah, really? <laughs> it's like, really? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I, oh, I've done this a lot where I'm shooting through somebody's legs and I'm like, no, spread your legs further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've said that a lot. Oh, my God. Well, that's geez, awesome. I don't know if that's something you just say. I've said that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you do. Maybe you just you sound like spread your legs further. Right, right. I need to get this in there. You said so. yeah. Oh, okay. Now I remember. Um, so the other one that cast, cast it out to me it deals with one of. Uh, my friend, uh, uh, Shanta, a.k.a. Uh, Celeste from Deadgers. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one where she, where she's basically thinking that uh, her boy, her her boyfriend, now husband, is wanting to, you know, to feel a little kinky and stuff like that. So she just drops her pants. He's really just eating, like, a barrel oh, of ice cream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's, it's so good. Literally, it's just a perfect shot of him just eating ice cream while her bare ass is just... Yeah. Yeah. That, that, there's a funny story behind a couple of funny stories behind that one. One when I first met um, Shanta, um, uh, but when I first met her through Dead Girl and we were on a show and everything, she had, there had this ongoing gag where she said, "I she came to me and she said I, I want to do an FML and I want to show my ass in it because everybody sees my ass and then it's just something she does. I guess she moves people all the time and she, it, it's funny and I was like, all right, I'll come find it so. That, that really is her husband in it, and uh, he wasn't lactose intolerant at the time, but afterwards he became lactose intolerant. Oh my god! Because <laughs> <That's laughs> he gets di- you know, he, yeah. he, he gets diarrhea in that one. That's that that, that, that is funny. <laughs> he just wants to eat his ice cream. But yeah, a lot, a lot of the ones that do involve sex are ones that just stand out to me. Just Maybe literally, it's just like do more of them. <laughs> just, we just are, get, uh, just, just oh get yeah. in the mood. But then that one moment, just like fuck. Yeah, I just talked to her. She and uh, her friend Morgan are gonna come out sometime next week. Oh, nice. Episode, gonna it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a legendary episode. I think. When it's oh yeah, no. I, 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 I have, I have high expectations when it comes out. She goes. Be like your best friend come out every week. Hang out. She's maybe I could be the one that says no. Like, spread them further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get you off the hook for now. <laughs> you're, you're, you're kind of like the assistant director. Yeah, right? <laughs> you gotta be smooth with it. <laughs> you, you gotta get like those like douchey gla- glasses that make you just look like cool. Yeah. You're, wearing, yeah. you're wearing them inside even though there's like no say, sunlight. Like, things like after that too. Okay, now call me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a kink of mine. And action. <laughs> okay. It's a kink of mine. <laughs> and and after that. Yeah. You just hold the camera. It's like, just remember, look at Daddy. Yeah, look at Daddy. <laughs> look at Daddy. What? And action. <laughs> I, I had a, um, a, a 
fan, I guess, it, it, it was, but if somebody didn't know, they messaged me and they said that they wanted to get into making films and they wanted to do YouTube videos and stuff. And he was like, but, you know, what do you recommend? What do you, what's your advice? And he said that he wanted to do skits and some of them were a little like... Like racy or something? Racy, like yeah. I do. And I said, the only advice I can give you is don't be creepy. You know, and, you know if you're going to do in a scene like that, you have to take it seriously and take it professionally. Yeah. And because otherwise, no one's going to work with you. So you have to, the reason why... So just don't work with me and Nick, got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nick can't well, I've done one and I did my normal thing where I was just joking all the time. <laughs> And I'm laying in bed next to him. He's trying to get the shot and all this whole scene. I'm the whole time like I'm I'm, I'm actually in my boxers underneath. And, like, and she's like in her bra and panties, and she's like laying next to me. I just keep saying like, all right, are we really doing this? It's like, oh, oh, like yeah. are we doing a softcore porn? Yeah, like, we're gonna make it happen. Yeah, that was as well. Yeah, that was well. Like, that's the one where he brings her home or to his house, and it's this huge, fantastic house, and she's like, wow, you know, didn't expect you to be this rich or whatever. <laughs> And uh, while after they have sex, or a minute before, they're in bed together, and the real owners of the house should come home. He was squatting. And, oh, okay, that's you know, Parasite. And they're like telling him, get the fuck out of here, who are you? Yeah, we were banging, and they went in the bedroom. Yeah. And they're like, well, who the hell are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? And they're be like, I live here. And they're like, you don't live here. And I looked at her, and I was like, I gotta go. Like, <laughs> super big. <laughs> But I had to do my thing and just like, just keep joking through the whole being naked and like he's like, come on, like, I'm like Nick, spread it wider. Just, come on, spread it wider. Exactly. I, I just say shave my cheeks. I can't yeah. see. That was a good. That was a good day. I remember that was a good day. Um, he said I just. It shaved. was a cold day, but it was a good day. I, you probably have facial cheeks because shaving your butt cheeks, that's weird. You got it. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. So, I, so I'm not going to lie. This went over than expected. I was hoping to get an hour. We're almost like at 80 minutes right now. But in all honesty, this was worth it. Just hearing these great stories from FML to wrestling is just oh, yeah. absolutely amazing. This is going to be a really awesome episode. So... It's probably going to be one of those episodes where I'll have to say, for those of you that get offended really easily, don't listen to this. For, no, those, of you, yeah. for those of you that have the immature, the immature you know, uh, sense of humor, you're going to enjoy this you episode. Probably, you, know, you probably should have started the episode. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. no expert. Dub in that before you. Yeah. <laughs> if you right. listen to the end and they hate it, just they claim. Like, yeah, you're right, I shouldn't have listened to this. Oh, but if, if they can't read the description, then you know that's their fault. I mean, like, even the title, I'll just, be, I'll just be like, hey, this is for immature audiences. Yeah. I mean, you know? you're right. Yeah. You don't need Catholics in your demographic. I'm serious. Back, Back to the Catholics. Just let them go. <laughs> just, just, just leave them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to encapsulate people to stop thinking Christianity and Catholicism is a good idea. Like, I'm just done with that. I feel like going forward in my art, I'm going to try to teach certain groups of people that ways that they've lived might not be the best. Just to try to broaden people's minds a little yeah. bit. Well, I have that, that Monsignor Gregory character who's clearly a, a creepy pedophile priest <laughs> to <laughs> teach kids do not fucking trust priests. No, he, he does. He, this, that, that's, uh, that's, I don't want people to like not know about that, not be warned. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, great, it's a great episode because it <laughs> has all... It all, it all <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Is that the one where he beats you up? Is that what you're talking about? I've done yeah, it a couple times. In this last episode, I did it with Aiden. I, here, we filmed it yeah, over here. Yeah. 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 I show up and I, I try to get them to believe in the Bible, to live forever and stuff like that, which yeah. is exactly what they do. I try to hook little kids in. Like, I really yeah. want people to see the whole full spectrum of life, if I can offer yeah. that. He's a good villain character. Yes, yeah. he's he, great. He really is. Everybody's going to hate the mind he's, he's got the eyebrows. <laughs> he's got, <laughs> he's got, the, he's got eyebrows. the eyebrows. Uh, so, definitely, guys, you get a chance. Go check out Notebook Entertainment. It's absolutely amazing. From FML to even even though they're not happening right now, Dedersons is yeah, still one of my favorite series. Up there, yeah. Just so many great things that are coming up. Definitely check them out on Facebook. It's great. Also check out the wrestling show. It's entertaining. It's fun. You might see me on there. You might not. Who knows at this point? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to spoil too much of that right Probably now. Probably yeah. yes, but you got to wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a pretty good indicator that me and Nate have met each other by now. Yeah. So we're so, going to have to inevitably fight. I, 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 basically. But I'm, I'm probably going to have to say it might be sooner than later. Wink, wink. Who knows at this point? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? So, so Thank God it's not show and tell anymore. You're actually... <laughs> <laughs> so, know, oh, he's winking here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just want to say before he close out, dude, it's been, it's been a... A fucking great privilege to be on the show. Uh, I've had a ball of a time, and, and I love I love you guys. 
Uh, <laughs> this is we, 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 we love you too, yeah, we're dresses and all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, yeah, so I look forward to hearing your music, bro. And this, I want to have your songs featured on the show. Dude, that'd be I'm awesome. Excited about that. Why awesome. talked about you before I even met you? When so Ryan gets his computer, if he wants to even sit at it and not let me touch it, he can even edit all the music too that, that I put up on there. Uh, re- remind me, and I'll give you that music. <laughs> oh, okay. I got so much more. His music. I got so much more. So I'll definitely say thank you to Nick, to Wyatt, to Mikey. To Matt, thank you guys so much for being a part of the you, show. Bro. This thank was, you. This thank was you. awesome. Thank you, thanks Derek. for making the drive. <laughs> thank you, Derek, especially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for making the drive down here. We really appreciate it. Like this could not have happened without you. You know what I mean? Like thanks. you are a cool guy. Thank you very much. So for Nate, I'm Nate the Effing Great. This has been the Game Changer Podcast, and this has been for immature audiences. Deal with it. Stop being so sensitive about it. Just live life. <laughs>